Hello, and welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Arrow Programming Using Scala. In this video, we're going to finish off the stack implementation that we started two videos ago. In our last video, we wrote some unit tests, and we found that while the first three unit tests that we wrote to make sure that a new stack was empty, uh, push a single element, check that it was not empty, push three elements, pop the three elements, make sure they came off in reverse order, and that it ended up empty. Those all worked. But then we wrote one that had to push 100 objects onto the stack, and then pull them off in reverse order, and it failed, and it failed because it threw an exception. And the reason it threw an exception is because we have an array that is all of 10 elements in size. Okay, so that's, that's our problem. How do we fix that? Well, if we push something and it's not going to fit on the array, we need to make a bigger array. Okay, so let's we'll start off if top is greater than or equal to data dot length. Okay. That means that we don't have space to, to put this. So what do we need to do? We need to make a bigger array. And then we're going to have to copy things over and then make that new bigger array into the array that we're using. So I'll create an array, I'll call it temp is a new array of type A. And the question is, how big should this array be? Okay, how, how big do we want this? Uh, well, it's tempting to do something like data.length plus 10, or maybe plus 100, or whatever. Okay. That's a very tempting thing to do. Um, and, and I think that a lot of novice programmers would choose to do exactly this. There's one problem with this, though. If you go back to a few videos, uh, I talked about order notation because I have one requirement on all of my operations here, and that is that they have to be order one. Okay. I need to make it so that no matter how many elements are on the stack, these things are gonna take a fixed amount of time. Now, we'll, we'll talk about the fact that this is kind of an on average thing. This peak clearly is, it happens the same whether you have 10 items or 10 million items. Same thing for is empty. Same thing for pop. And what we had for push did this too. But now I'm going to do something here. So we'll just leave that at plus 10 and then we'll come back and think about this a little bit. What's the next step in here? Well, the next step is something like for i in data dot indices temp sub i equals data sub i. So I copy those elements over, data sub i, or sorry, just data equals temp. That's unhappy because right now our data is a val. Clearly we're going to have to make it a var because we have to be able to, to change what array we're using. Okay, so this for loop right here is not order one. Okay. This for loop right here is order in, because I have to run through all of the n elements that were in my data array and copy them over. And that is problematic. Okay, how can we get around this? Well, in some ways, I can't. What I'm gonna do instead is I want to make it so this doesn't happen often, so that the way it works out is if I add n elements, I only copy n elements, and so on average, I'm only doing one copy per push. And so, now granted, all those copies will be lumped into a single time, but as long as it all averages out to, to order one, I'm happy. This way of doing things does not or average out to order one. Okay. I put on 10, and then as soon as I have pushed 10 more things, I have to do it again, and again, and again. Turns out that if you grow by any fixed constant, the amount of work that you're going to do is going to be order in, even when you average it out. Which means that when you push n items, you're gonna take order n squared time to do it. And I wanna make it so if I push n items, I take order n time to do it. Because if I do something that's order one n times, the result is, is order in. So how can I do this? How can I make it so that the number of times that I have to do this, this copying goes down such that the number of copies that I make winds up uh, scaling as n. And a simple way to do this is to not change the size by an additive factor, but to change it by a multiplicative factor. 
So an easy way to do this is to just say times two. Okay. Now why does this work? Well, this works because let's pick some, uh, well, like, yeah, pick some number like uh, 32. Okay. If I had multiplied by two multiple times, I get to 32. 32 plus 16 plus eight plus four plus two plus one happens to be equal to two times 32 minus one. And it turns out whatever power of two I stick in here, this is going to work. So I have a constant multiple of that power of two minus one. You might also know this as the, the mathematical relationship, one plus one half plus one quarter plus one eighth plus one sixteenth, et cetera, et cetera, equals two. Okay, so it's an infinite sum of, of values, but they wind up all adding up to, to the nice uh, value of two. Uh, same type of thing happens here. Because this grows by a factor of two each time, the number of times that I have to do this copy operation goes down logarithmically. And so on average, when you add up all of my copies, it will wind up adding up to basically two times the number of things that I've pushed on, which is still order one. And that's, that's what we were going for there. So now that I've written that, the question is, does it work? Well, we can come back over here to our tests and I can run my tests and a green bar. Okay, so it passes this last test. Viewers should, are strongly encouraged to come up with other tests of their own to make sure that, that what we're doing, one thing I would note, I have not made a single test call to peak in, in this. Uh, okay, I could do that fairly easily by doing an assert equals of in and stack dot peak before I do the pop. And of course our peak works nicely. Uh, but you could add more tests onto this because in many ways this isn't complete. I do things like I push and then I pop I never did a push a bunch of things, pop a bunch of things until empty, and then push some more on. Um, there, are some, there, are, there are actually bugs in certain ways of writing these data structures, not so much for the array stack, but, but things that we'll see, where emptying it all the way and then re-pushing can show you that you had an error, where uh, if you don't do that type of test, you won't see it. This is sufficient for our purposes though. We now have a working array based stack. And so we're gonna leave the stack. In the next video, we're going to come back and we're going to implement our queue interface and write an array based queue.